the um, topic of this uh, talk is uh, uh, to evaluate the role of multimodality imaging for assessing coronary artery disease in women. This is a great and important task. And uh, I would like to share with you some uh, news, starting from uh, uh, a very interesting uh, um, new paper. So this is a very uh, novel findings that was uh, published in 2019 about the difference in terms of uh, brains and uh, different uh, brain matter, brain volume in men versus women. And you can see that there is a big difference also in terms of connection between the two lobes of the brain. And uh, so um, the scientists uh, didn't know what does it mean really? But uh, I can have some suspicion, but it's up to you to define at the end uh, which is the best and uh, more important difference in terms of connection from left to side and interconnection between women and men. So if you think about this difference, you can imagine that uh, if there are differences uh, in the brain, why not to think about differences also in the heart? And uh, there are a lot of things that uh, uh, we know very well in terms of uh, pathophysiological consideration, uh, in terms of cardiovascular disease. So if you compare to men, women, uh, especially younger, uh, in the sense that you need to think younger, lower than 55 years old, have an increase of 25% risk due to cigarette smoking. This is a very important point. The second point is that hypertension severity is more predominant with age in women. And uh, this is uh, um, very prevalent in uh, postmenopausal women than in men. So we need to think about the role of estrogen and so on. But if you think about diabetes, women have a two to four fold excess risk of coronary artery disease when you compare to men. And also there, are, there is an increased risk of heart failure. If you think about uh, this lipidemia uh, in women, it contributes more strongly to the incidence of cardiovascular disease. And finally, LPA that is closely related to cholesterol and so on has been is identified as a genetic risk factors. So uh, all these things can uh, demonstrate that there is a difference between the heart of women versus men. So it means that we need to think a little bit different when we use our imaging in women rather than a man. But of course, uh, generally, we have in front of us uh, uh, postmenopausal women and uh, uh, we can think that, uh, for example, uh, in women with uh, intact ovarian hormonal function, there is a low incidence of coronary artery disease. But uh, the subanalysis of the WISE study indicates that in premenopausal women with hypoestrogenemia, there is a more angi angiographic coronary disease. So uh, probably if we have some information about the uh, hormonal evaluation in women, we can think a little bit better which can be the impact and which can be the real situation in terms of evaluation of coronary artery disease. And the role of menopause is very important. It's so important that in uh, uh, postmenopausal women, we need to think on the use of imaging for the evaluation of ischemia. And uh, um, the role of CT and in particular of uh, coronary artery calcium score in uh, symptomatic women uh, can have a role also in terms of prognostic evaluation. But uh, after that, we need to think on how is the heart of women. 
And first, we know very well that uh, women as, uh, um, have smaller epicardial coronary arteries. So it can be a sort of challenge in the evaluation of CT and uh, uh, for coronary arteries uh, uh, anatomy evaluation. But of course, uh, if we think that uh, uh, in some hospitals now we have the possibility to use the new photon counting, probably in the future, this risk uh, uh, will decrease. But up to now with the uh, standard CT, it can be a big challenge. Also, uh, women have uh, uh, thinner myocardial walls and uh, it can be another challenge for the evaluation of transmural ischemia, for example, uh, with uh, CMR. And finally, if we, we think about the results uh, in the evaluation of microcirculatory, microcirculation abnormalities, absolute myocardial blood flow, and coronary flow reserve that can be obtained by PET, we know that, for example, that uh, in uh, women we have higher myocardial blood flow both at rest and after stress, but we have similar coronary flow reserve. So it means that coronary flow reserve doesn't add uh, a lot in the evaluation of women, but we need to have absolute myocardial blood flow in order to evaluate a little bit better our women. But of course, it's, uh, it's not enough because uh, also basomotor tone is lower in coronary artery in women than in men, and it uh, can be related to sex hormone effect. And we have also higher myocardial blood flow, as we know before, uh, in women. But if we uh, couple with uh, their smaller coronary artery, we can have significantly higher uh, endothelial shear stress. And uh, uh, from a clinical point of view, um, it contributes to sex difference and to this susceptibility of coronary atherosclerosis. Finally, uh, in OCA, uh, it means that uh, in women, in OCA is more prevalent. So it means that uh, in women, we have ischemia without uh, no obstructive coronary arteries. So all these things make uh, a challenge in the evaluation of multimodality imaging in uh, um, the evaluation of coronary artery disease in women. So we need to know tips and tricks of the different imaging modalities in order to use the best one for the evaluation of our women. So exercise stress test. Uh, if we analyze the results of exercise stress test and uh, if we analyze also only the ST answer of, mm, to, the, to the stress, we know that uh, the diagnostic accuracy is lower in women than in women, just 47%. So it's a sort of uh, uh, side coin, uh, uh, white or black, uh, so on, 50%. So yes or no, it can be a big challenge. Uh, also, it's uh, uh, in in uh, symptomatic women. It the same, and uh, uh, it means that probably exercise stress test is not the best test for the evaluation of our ladies. But what about uh, stress echo? So there is limited data regarding gender differences in the use of stress echo. But we know that if we compare, if we, if we perform an head-to-head -head comparison of the glutamine stress versus exercise stress test in echocardiography, the glutamine stress echo showed higher accuracy. And why? Probably because uh, the um, women cannot reach very high level of exercise stress test for uh, uh, incompetence in terms of muscular incompetence. Uh, or because uh, they have a big breast and so the quality of the echo is not so good when they perform an exercise stress test. So dobutamine can be uh, more accurate in the evaluation of uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, and this is a very, very important point. 
And what about my career scintigraphy? So uh, the um, sensitivity and the specificity of uh, uh, my cardiac scintigraphy changed a lot if you compare different kind of uh, um, published papers. And uh, it's due to the fact that also the uh, type of uh, camera that was uh, used in the different papers uh, are completely different. So with the new camera, the uh, sensitivity and specificity increased also because the spatial resolution and temporary solution changed a lot. Um, so it means that uh, you need to be sure that you operate with the best technology in order to increase the sensitivity and the specificity of your spec evaluation. But on the other side, the prognostic value of a normal spec myocardial perfusion imaging is excellent. Uh, so it means that in absence of perfusion defect, uh, you can have a 99 event free survival event and uh, in a very large meta analysis. So it means that it's very good. But with the new camera, several studies demonstrate that uh, there is an excellent prognostic value. Uh, in, in the evaluation of uh, the single of versus uh, three vessel disease and uh, um, in terms of prognosis. So uh, probably for the diagnosis, it's not so good, but in terms of prognosis, it's a very, very robust technique. And what about uh, CTCA? Uh, so there is a uh, high sensitivity, but uh, and high ne negative predictive value. But uh, due to the fact that the coronary is uh, smaller than in men, there is a lower sensitivity in the distal coronary segments and uh, in the side branch. And uh, the specificity is also lower in a smaller epicardial size. Uh, Moreover, we know that uh, women have fewer calcified lesions and fewer calcified vessels. So it can be used uh, if you think that uh, you can have at the end this quality in terms of uh, uh, evaluation. But of course, the uh, PROMISE study uh, showed that uh, you have a less significant abnormal uh, CTCA uh, compare uh, with men, and uh, if you compare also with the positive stress test. Uh, so like uh, we say before, so you have a positive stress test, but uh, the incidence of a presence of coronary stenosis is reduced, it. and we know from the beginning why. But of course, the presence of uh, significant coronary stenosis and a positive CTCA was uh, strongly associated with subsequent um, clinical events. Uh, it means that in presence of a coronary stenosis uh, uh, detected by CTCA in women, uh, you need to treat very aggressively because the prognosis is poor if compared to men. And furthermore, uh, and finally, high risk plaque were a strong predictor of maize in men versus women. So uh, you have a lower probability to have coronary stenosis, but in presence of coronary stenosis, the risk of women is higher if you compare to men. And what about uh, CMR? Uh, CMR, there is a high sensitivity and specificity in detecting CAD. And the diagnostic, the diagnostic role uh, with evidence of myocardial injury, without evidence of obstructive uh, um, uh, injury, is uh, uh, very important because uh, uh, potentially it uh, underlines a mechanism that can include uh, not only presence of uh, stenosis, but also coronary disorders like uh, dissection, plaque disruption, coronary spasm, microvascular dysfunction. So it means that also CMR, despite the thinner um, reduction in terms of, uh, uh, if you compare to men, can have a very important role in women. And uh, you can evaluate, for example, presence of MINOCA that can guide medical treatment. So the use of uh, CMR uh, will increase in women due to this uh, very, very relevant uh, point and uh, the possibility to uh, 
uh, discriminate different kind of uh, uh, pathology and uh, um, coronary disorders. And finally, PET. PET up to now is the only technique that uh, uh, has uh, the possibility to measure quantitative absolute myocardial blood flow and coronary flow reserve. And so it means that, especially in women, the sensitivity and specificity is the higher in detecting coronary stenosis, significant coronary stenosis. So it means that there is presence of coronary stenosis plus ischemia that is the worst risk uh, for, for women and also for men. And, uh, um, but if you compare the presence of uh, microvascular dysfunction with or without coronary artery disease, it's prevalent in women also in terms of absolute myocardial blood flow. It means that you need to treat very uh, aggressively uh, this kind of women in order to uh, avoid the presence of uh, remodeling related to the presence of microvascular dysfunction and my microcirculatory dysfunction. Uh, but also the possibility to evaluate in terms of absolute myocardial blood flow and coronary flow reserve, the uh, different vessel, uh, it means that you can measure the hemodynamic effect, for example, of uh, focal diffusion, a small vessel coronary disease on microvascular myocardial tissue perfusion. And it's very important because you can treat differently, for example, in presence of diabetes, in presence of uh, um, uh, hypercholesterolemia in presence of hypertension, and it's uh, a different kind of, uh, uh, a different spectrum of uh, possibility that you have in front of you, in front of a woman, and you need to treat uh, differently and uh, uh, the type of women that you have in front of you. But of course, uh, you can see here that uh, uh, about uh, two, two, uh, uh, 74% of women without coronary artery disease showed an independent association of impaired coronary flow reserve and diastolic dysfunction. This is very important because uh, it increased the presence of cardiovascular events uh, in the follow-up and the possibility to have heart failure hospitalization. So do not forget to check if you have the possibility, the uh, absolute myocardial blood flow and coronary flow reserve, and to associate uh, this data with the presence or absence of coronary stenosis, because you need to treat also more strongly and more aggressively this kind of women. So here you have uh, the possibility to uh, evaluate uh, uh, also this type of uh, uh, different uh, levels of absolute myocardial blood flow, not only uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, global, but also regional. And it is very important because here you have absence of coronary flow reserve, but you can see here that there is a strongly reduction in terms of uh, uh, stress, uh, vasodilation, and uh, the coronary flow reserve is reduced. This is a very high risk women. And if you compare uh, coronary flow reserve in men versus women, you can see that uh, the risk in having a reduction of uh, coronary flow reserve is higher, even if uh, the, uh, the uh, coronary flow reserve is lower in, in male. And uh, this is very important because uh, it means that uh, uh, in presence of reduction of coronary flow reserve, uh, the risk uh, uh, just uh, uh, lower than expected, uh, or uh, if you compare to, to, to men, the risk of this union is, uh, is higher. And why? Because the um, this is the difference between men and uh, women. In men, you have a focal lesion, while in women, you have a diffuse lesion that can uh, reduce the coronary flow also in the, in the um, microcirculation. And uh, it means that uh, you can have a reduction in possibility to, uh, for example, to use uh, uh, revascularization by PCA or by CABG, uh, while you can use, of course, uh, in men, and the risk of cardiovascular event is uh, is higher. This is a very simple explanation. It's very very clear, but can uh, uh, you can use it just to remember the different kind of approach that you can use in women versus men. 
And uh, uh, this is very nice because this is a paper published uh, just uh, last year that is a sort of uh, uh, flow chart. This is a very interesting approach uh, in terms of the evaluation of low risk versus intermediate high risk that uh, start for the evaluation of uh, presence of calcium uh, score uh, why, with the city and uh, in presence of uh, calcium uh, it's favorable the use of uh, uh, functional stress testing mm, whatever you want uh, the butamine uh, eco uh, CMR stress CMR uh, myocardial scintigraphy or PET of course uh, PET is uh, the best one but also quantitative uh, CMR uh, if you have it or in absence of uh, uh, calcium, you can use uh, CT and geography uh, in order to evaluate the presence of uh, plaque and uh, high risk plaque, or to um, uh, use like a rule out absence of um, uh, uh, myocardial of coronary stenosis. Uh, of course, uh, the use of medical treatment is preferred, but also. Uh, in case the, the use of uh, um, vascularization by PCI or by CABG. But uh, very, very strong treatment with uh, medical therapy is recommended in uh, all the women. Of course, last, my last slide. So we need to invest more uh, for the evaluation of uh, uh, the use of imaging in women, we need to invest more in imaging research and clinical trials. We need to uh, select better women to be uh, used for uh, um, clinical trials. And we need to implement a radiation dose reduction strategies in women. And uh, finally, uh, we need to check which is the best cardiovascular imaging uh, technology uh, to be used and uh, in different kind of population. And we need to use cardiovascular imaging as gatekeeper in women. That is, could be very, very important to identify the uh, which is the best therapy, which is the best treatment for women at uh, different level of risk and to uh, the quality of the test is mandatory in order to evaluate in the best way our uh, women. Thank you very much for your attention.